Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, what I had planned to do was demonstrate the installation of a zero fret on one of the guitars that I'm building, sort of a um, expansion on what I had talked about in the last episode where I explained what a zero fret is. Well, I've had a couple of uh, minor setbacks and some delays, and as a result, uh, I'm going to have to probably push the zero fret installation off until the next episode, which I hope to be pushing um, up to YouTube next week. So this week I thought I would talk about something a little bit different. A couple of weeks ago I did an episode where I talked about the three keys to achieving success when building a guitar. And after sh uh, posting that episode, I kind of thought about it. And it occurred to me there's actually, possibly, a fourth key. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this episode. And what that key is, is if you're a first-time builder especially, um, and I would even recommend this for people who are experienced, and I, I'll kind of explain why in a minute, I would highly recommend that you consider producing a full-size, full-scale, fully dimensioned plan for the guitar that you're going to build. The reason for having a full-size, full-scale, fully dimensioned plan is it can help you to solve some of the problems that may come up during the building process. And it will answer some questions, even questions you may not even realize you're going to have as you're building the guitar. For example, you know, how wide to make your fretboard, um, the position, depth of your um, neck pocket, pickup pockets, control cavity, and you know the angle of the neck, placement of the bridge, all these uh, questions that you will likely have can be answered by doing one of these full-size, full-scale, fully dimensioned drawings. And I typically will do a top view and a side view. And this helps me to uh, establish uh, some of the parameters and help me figure out exactly how I need to build this guitar so that when I'm actually building it, I won't find myself getting into trouble with um, features that may not play well together or just simply aren't going to work. So I can answer those right off the bat. And it also helps you to visualize the aesthetics of the guitar, the body shape, the headstock shape, that kind of thing. So um, I highly encourage you to consider uh, producing a drawing like this. Now, there are obviously several different ways that you can do this. You can do it the old school way with a drafting table and a T-square and rulers and compasses and uh, mechanical pencils and that kind of thing. Or you can join the 21st century and design your guitar on the computer using a variety of different uh, CAD programs or uh, vector-based um, illustration programs and I use a combination of different programs as I'm uh, creating my designs and for those of you who don't have access to any of those kind of tools what you can also do is go online and, and you've probably done this before and you can find plans for just about any guitar that you'd want to build and you can download those plans and use those as a basis for building your guitar. And, and I know a lot of people who have, who've done that. Um, but one of the disadvantages with doing that is you have to be really careful about the plan you're downloading. Because, you, for example, you'll find that if you download, uh, if you go on and, and, and search for a uh, Telecaster, for example, you probably are going to find a half a dozen free plans for a Telecaster. And if you download all of them and compare, you're going to find they're all different. So you either have to combine or pick one that you feel is going to work best for you. And that can lead to some problems. Um, another way that you can um, acquire a plan for building a guitar is there are some websites out there which offer guitar plans for sale. And typically in those situations, I think the plans are a little bit better thought out. And uh, even though you're going to be paying some money for those plans, at least you know that uh, there's a good chance that you're going to uh, achieve success in building your guitar. In fact, some of you may already know this, 
but I have a website called eGuitarPlans.com. And on that website, I have, I think there's 14 different guitar designs, and you can purchase the plans for those different designs. And what you would get is um, you would get a, an email with a link to download a PDF file. And that PDF file contains uh, a full-size, fully dimensioned drawing, which you can print out. You can take that file to a, uh, a, like an office supply or a print shop that uh, can handle large format. I think the 36 by 48, and you can print out that full-size, uh, full-scale sheet and use that. I also include the files in PDF format tiled to fit either A4 or letter size paper. So you can print it out on your desktop printer. And there are bullseyes in the corner so that you can line up the sheets and tape them all together and that way you can produce as many copies as you want to because you'll find when you're using a printed paper blueprint to build your guitar or at least to make the templates for your guitar you're probably going to have to print out several copies at any rate i think it's really important especially if you're building your first guitar from scratch to have a set of plans and it will save you so much trouble down the road when you're trying to get everything assembled and it'll help you avoid the problems of, um, you know, putting the bridge in the wrong place or angling the neck too much or uh, not uh, routing out your uh, pickup pockets deep enough to hold the pickups, you know, just a whole host of things. Now, experienced luthiers are going to tell you, oh, you don't need a set of plans. All you need to do is respect the center line and follow some basic rules of thumb and you'll be fine. That's not always true. And, um, I just think that, well, for one thing, do you know what all those rules of thumb are? And the funny thing is, is I could sit here and list out off the top of my head all the rules of thumb that I've learned over the years, but I guarantee I'm going to forget several key important rules. It's just, there's just too many of them and it's too easy to overlook a few. So, and all it takes is to overlook one during the construction of your guitar, to end up with a piece of expensive firewood that's not going to play or perform correctly. So if you're going to be investing a lot of money in expensive wood, before you start to cut that wood, you want to know exactly what you're going to be doing, and a plan will help you. Templates will also help you, and, and that certainly goes along with the plans because you will actually use your plans to make the templates. However, templates by themselves aren't going to give you specific details like what angle to put the neck at or how deep to make the pockets. So having a plan will do that. And speaking of plans, I've had a question that's popped up several times in the last few days from viewers about my uh, workbench, my buffing machine, and my drum sander, which I'll be featuring in an uh, upcoming video as well. Am I going to be offering plans for those? And the answer is yes. In fact, the plans are pretty much almost done. But this is not going to be the same as my CNC machine, where I promise to have plans and then never deliver. Um, I've actually almost got the CNC plans totally, completely finished. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to make those plans available for a reasonable price. Because remember, this stuff takes a lot of work to put these things together. I, I can't offer them for free. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post them up onto my eGuitar Plans uh, website. And I'll be putting a link in this description below so that you can go check out that website. And so I'll make those available probably in the next few weeks. And you can uh, visit, that, visit the website and, and, you know, if you want, purchase those. And another thing that I wanted to kind of stress about the whole offering plans thing is that I know there are a lot of other guitar builders out there uh, on YouTube who have their YouTube channels and they, they also have like a, a Patreon page where people who like what they're doing and support what they're doing can go and, and um, you know, donate money to their cause. And I've, I've always been hesitant to do that because I have a real issue with the whole idea of um, internet begging and digital panhandling. So... I kind of thought having this uh, eGuitar Plans website selling plans would be a way for you to show your support if you're interested and get something in return. 
Plus, even if you don't build the guitar uh, from the plans that you purchase, you can print those things out really at any size you want, frame them and stick them up on the wall. It makes kind of a nice, interesting kind of uh, wall art. So um, there's that to consider. Anyway, that's really all I've got to uh, talk about for this episode. And as I said before, in the next episode, I'm definitely going to try to do that zero fret installation. Um, I'm really excited about that, and, and I've got everything ready to go. I just I just had to overcome a few setbacks and, and get to a point where I can actually uh, install that fret, that, that the zero fret, and, and keep moving on it. So, um, and then beyond that, I'm going to do an episode where I'm going to demonstrate my amazing new drum sander. This thing is so cool. I can't wait to show you. I've posted some photos before, but I'll show it to you in action. So, and until the, the next episode, um, take care and we will see you soon.